Hello, friends. Welcome back to English Classes Online. My name is Benjamin. In today's video, we are going to look at transitive verbs in English and how to use them correctly. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Click on the bell icon as well, so that whenever a new video is uploaded on the channel, you will be notified instantly. I have a free PDF file for you in the description box. It contains full explanation on the basic units of English grammar. So if you are interested in learning uh, important aspects of the English grammar, then you can click on the link in the description box so you will be able to download a free copy of the PDF file. You will also find my ebook titled Good Success in English, a complete study package for effective English learning. If you are interested in uh, gaining proficiency in the use of English, if you are interested in learning all the major areas of proficiency in the English language, then you need a copy of Good Success in English. Simply click on the link in the description box and you will be able to grab your own copy of the ebook. It is a great ally to all English learners. So let's dive right into the lesson. Now, why is it important? Well, let's first of all, look at the lesson objectives. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to, one, explain why it is important to learn about transitive and intransitive verbs. Two, define transitive verbs. Three, differentiate transitive from intransitive verbs. And four, use transitive verbs in sentences or uh, better still, explain the various ways in which we can use transitive verbs in English sentences. So let's begin with the first one. Why is it important to learn about transitive and intransitive verbs? The reason is simple. Learning about transitive and intransitive verbs uh, helps learners to use words correctly and be able to convey accurate meaning. You know, knowing uh, if a verb is transitive or intransitive helps you to know how to use it appropriately, all right? So we will find out more about this as we get into uh, the uses of these transitive verbs. Now, what is it, excuse me, what exactly is a transitive verb? A transitive verb is a verb that requires an object to complete its meaning. A verb that is transitive transfers the action from the object to another person or thing. Let's look at some specific examples and uh, let me see if I can get uh, something to analyze the sentences. Now, the first one, Uncle Ben built a house. You see, the verb here is built. So if you, if you are talking about, if you say you build something, someone will know, want to know what you built. And so that is a transitive verb. It requires an object. So here, Uncle Ben built what? You know, that's the natural question. When you use a transitive verb, without an object, it raises a question because it creates a, a, a gap that, you know, raises some natural question. So Uncle Ben built, you, you, if you put a full stop, if you simply say, oh, Uncle Ben built, built what? That's naturally what every listener will want to know. All right. And so the object here is a new house. And a new house is a noun phrase. So usually 
the object of a transitive verb is either a noun, a noun phrase, or a pronoun, all right? It is either a person or a thing, okay? Then let's look at the next one. Jack ate the food. The transitive verb here is ate. If you say you ate, someone will want to know what exactly you ate, all right? And then the object here is the food. And so the question that naturally arises, if you simply say Jack ate, somebody will ask Jack ate what? The answer is the food. And that is the object of the transitive verb. So now a transitive verb is essentially an action verb. All right, that's one thing you need to know. It is an action verb, and then it takes an object. So these are the two specific characteristics of a transitive verb. Number one, it is an action verb. It expresses action. Number two, it, uh, it requires an object to complete its meaning. Okay, so let's, um, let's uh, move on. All right. Now, what is an intransitive verb? We have seen a transitive verb. Now we want to differentiate a transitive verb from an intransitive verb. Now, unlike a transitive verb, an intransitive verb does not require a direct object to complete its meaning. All right. The action expressed by an intransitive verb can be done by a person or thing all alone. So number one, an intransitive verb is an action verb, but it doesn't require an object. That's the difference, all right? Let's look at examples. The baby is crying. It, that is complete in its meaning. You don't need to ask what the baby is crying because it doesn't make sense. The baby is simply crying. You can cry all alone. You, you don't need you to transfer the action of crying to another person. Number two, the dog barked. You, you won't be asking, it will be a silly question to ask uh, the dog barked what? No. However, you, you can ask certain questions where did the baby cry? When did the baby cry? How did the baby cry? Why did the baby cry? These are all uh, questions to be answered by uh, an adverb or an adverbial element. The baby is crying now, or the baby is crying loudly, or the baby is crying uh, endlessly, and so on and so forth. The dog barked. You may ask how the dog barked, and so on, all right? Where the dog backed. Then number three, the fire burned. Again, you can ask other questions, but it will be silly to ask, you know, the fire burned what? No, it doesn't require an object. So that's the difference between a, a transitive verb and an intransitive verb, all right? Now let's look at the various ways in which we can use transitive verbs. The first one is that a transitive verb can be used with only one direct object. Of course, we saw examples earlier, but let's look at other examples. You know, such a transitive verb is described as monotransitive. All right, that is it. It, it, it takes one object. For example, Jack slapped Jane, you know? So if you look at it here, you discover that, you know, it has one object. The object is Jane. Jack slapped Jane. Jane is the receiver of the action of the slapping. Olu killed an elephant. An elephant is a single, is the direct object 
of the transitive verb killed. And the third one, miss, is called a goal. A goal is the single object, the direct object of the verb scores. All right, so that is one way of using the transitive verbs, you know, using it with a with only one direct object, all right? So that's one way. Let's look at the next one. Okay. And then a transitive verb can be used with two objects, a direct object and an indirect object. And uh, such a transitive verb is described as di-transitive. That means it takes two objects. Let's look at specific examples. The principal gave Junior a new book. You see, this is the indirect object. This is the direct object. The principal gave Junior a uh, a new book. So this is the indirect object, and this is the direct object. All right, this is D. Okay, so this is the direct object, this is the indirect object. We may put I before O or so. So you have two objects here, yeah? direct and indirect. Then the second example, Mr. Okon bought his wife a phone. Now, the, his wife is one object, a phone is another object. So here you have the direct object, here you have the indirect object, all right? So in that case, the transitive verb can be described as di-transitive. It has, it takes two objects, all right? All right, so let's, um, let's move on. So the third way in which we can use transitive verbs is, uh, to use them intransitively as well as transitively. In other words, some transitive verbs can be used both transitively and intransitively. Let's look at some specific examples. I, Debbie is singing. This is an intransitive use of the verb singing, even though it is essentially a transitive verb yet it can be used intransitively. Baby, uh, Debbie is singing. He, the, the message is, is, uh, is, is clear to the listener. But you can also use it transitively if the listener wants to know what exactly Debbie is singing. Then you can say Debbie is singing a new song. So in other words, the transitive verb singing can be used intransitively and it can also be used transitively. When you use it intransitively, you don't, uh, it doesn't require a, an object. Debbie is singing, no object. But when you use it transitively, then it takes an object. Debbie is singing a new song. A new song becomes the object of the verb singing. Let's look at the next example. Junior is reading. Yes, reading is, is known. If you say someone is reading, of course, you, you may not disclose what he or she is reading. You can simply say Junior is reading, all right? But then that is one way of using it and that is the intransitive usage. You use the word reading intransitively when you do not give it an object. But you can take a step further and 
use it with an object if the reader, if the listener wants to know exactly what Junior is reading, then you can say Junior is reading a novel. So this is the transitive use. Now let's uh, move on. Transitive verbs can have passive forms. That's another thing we want to know about using transitive verbs. We can use them with, you know, we can use them uh, passively. You know, we can passivize, if you like, a transitive verb. How do we do that? Henry killed a snake. This is an active verb. In this case, we have, um, well, let me uh, see how I can analyze this. Now, the transitive verb here is killed, is an action verb. A snack is the, is the object, all right? So in this case, Henry is the subject, killed is the verb, and a snack is the object. So this is an active sentence. The verb is used in its active form and it is one way in which we have, you know, uh, noted that's the way to use a transitive verb. But then if we find the passive form, we can say a snake was killed by Henry. And uh, in this case, Henry can even be omitted by Henry becomes optional. You, if you remove it, it, it can still make sense. A snake was killed without even disclosing the killer. All right, so a transitive verb can be used, uh, can have a passive form. Another example is the policeman arrested a robbery suspect. You know, in this case, we are using it in its active form. And this kind of sentence is necessary when you want to emphasize the, the, the subject the policemen arrested. These were the people who took the action. Arrested, a robbery suspect. What if you don't even want to disclose the subject, but your attention is on, on, on the object, all right? And so you can use the passive form and say a robbery suspect was arrested. See the same uh, transitive verb, but then in its passive form. So that is another way of using transitive verbs, all right? So we have been able to look at uh, transitive verbs and how to use them correctly in English uh, sentences. And we have given copious examples. This is where we are going to draw the curtain on today's video. We have been looking at transitive verbs in English and how to use them correctly. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, like the video and share it with your friends and relations. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not done so and click on the bell icon as well so that whenever a new video goes live on the channel, you will be notified instantly. So you won't miss any new uploads, all right? Remember, I have a free gift for you, a free PDF file giving adequate explanation of the basic units of English grammar. If you are interested in it, click on the link in the description box and grab uh, a copy, download a free copy. And you will also find my ebook titled Good Success in English, a complete study package for effective English learning. If you are interested in that, click on the link in the description box as well, and you will be able to grab a copy of the ebook. Make, make sure you also. Uh, visit our website, the English Classes website, 
It is uh, www. Uh, let me give you the exact. Um, all right. So you can see W. Okay. www. English classes online. Dot com. Dot ng. All right. www. English classes online. Dot com. Dot ng. That is the website, so you can visit the website and uh, you will have access to various uh, resources that will help you gain proficiency in the use of English. Uh, you will also find amazing opportunities on this website that will enable you not only to learn English, but also to earn uh, in the process of learning. You also have uh, content creation uh, courses. If you want to learn content creation and do exactly what I'm doing on this channel and on other online platforms, then there are opportunities for you to understudy what I'm doing and to learn and replicate what I am doing so you can create multiple streams of income for yourself. If that resonates with you, then visit this uh, website. Uh, you will also find the link in the description box, and there's uh, another link that will take you to my portrait website, uh, which is Benjamin's Content Creation Center. There, of course, you will also find different online courses that will teach you, you know, digital skills uh, that will help you to earn money online. So. I want to say a big thank you to all of you for being part of today's episode. If you uh, have any questions, suggestions, or comments, leave them in the comments section below. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now and remain blessed.